You know, everyone always says that trading is a game of probabilities. I'm sure you've heard that expression before. You may have even heard me say it. And that's because it's true. Trading is about probabilities. So when you're analyzing an opportunity about to take that trade, you don't think to yourself, well, that's definitely a profit. Take that one to the bank. You also know that it could lose. It's about probabilities. Or when you're analyzing the trades you've taken and you look at your losses, you might think to yourself, actually, these were good trades. They just ended up losing. But that's expected because it's probabilities. It's going to happen sometime. And all of this is a great way to think about your trading. Trading is a game of probabilities. But to probably over 99% of people who do think that, I have something else I'd say as well. If that's the case, where are the probabilities in your analysis or your decision making? You see, most traders, when they're analyzing the markets, they're looking for a few things. They're looking for an entry point that matches their criteria, whether this is a reversal or breakout, something else, whatever it might be. And they're looking at where the price may go next, into profit, into loss, so they can set their stop loss, set their profit target. They then analyze the trade and see, this is a four to one, this is a three to one, good trade, I'm going to take that. But without the probability, we don't know if it's a good opportunity or not. If you take that same trade a thousand times over, how do you know if you're going to have a profit overall if you don't know the probability of it hitting that profit target or the stop loss? Probability matters. And let's say I'm a weather forecaster. I'm analyzing the weather and I can see that we've had seven days of sunshine, but there's a turning point. Clouds are coming over and I say, there's a chance of rain here. We might need to change our plans. It could still be sunny, but there's a chance of rain. Well, that's all well and good. But if I'm planning on going out somewhere, I need to know the probability. Is it a 30% chance of drizzle? In that case, I might just risk it. Or is it a 40% chance of a monsoon? In that case, I'm probably gonna give it a miss because let's be honest, I'm losing my hair and when this gets wet, it looks like I'm playing some sort of practical joke. So probability matters. Now, when you're looking at a trade and you say that's a good trade or that's a bad trade, without realizing it, in your mind, you're doing a probability estimate. We do this all the time with decisions we make in our everyday life. The problem is, it might not be a good one. It might not be very accurate. So the only way you can see how accurate it is and the only way to improve it, which could be the make or break for your trading performance, is to turn this subconscious process into something conscious and measure it. Because when you measure something, you can improve on it. Now, you might hear all of that and be thinking, well, that's what my success rate's for. I've taken all of these trades, a thousand of them, although let's be honest, most people just base their data on a few dozen trades, which isn't enough. But I've taken a thousand trades and 40% of the time they've been profitable. That's all I need to know. But here's the thing, each of those trades was unique in some way. The size of the profit, the size of the loss, the context of the market at that time, the level of volatility, the price moves you were seeing, the momentum and so on. There was a lot of different factors each and every time. You can't just take the average of all of them and use that as the probability for a new unique situation. That's like if you opened up the weather forecast and it said, yeah, sunny today because on average in the UK in this month, it's going to be sunny. And then you look outside the window and you see rain clouds. It's just not appropriate. You need to consider the uniqueness of that situation. That's what estimating probabilities is all about. And then the next thing that traders often say is that it's not possible to estimate the probabilities of future price movements. And to that I'd reply, well, in that case, why are you trading? Why are you taking part in an activity that involves forecasting future price movements and forecasting involves estimating probabilities if you don't think it's possible to? And let me repeat what I said earlier. When you're assessing an opportunity, even when you don't realize it, you're estimating the probabilities. When you look at the risk reward and it's a three to one or something, you're going through a calculation of how likely you think it is that it's going to reach the profit target. And if you don't believe me, let me put it this way. Let's say that I pick at random a three to one target, not based on anything, there's no edge. I just say, okay, you're gonna set your profit target 30 pips away and your stop loss 10 pips away at random. Would you take the trade? No, why not? because you have no idea of the probability of one or the other. So when you find your setups, when you're analyzing an opportunity, you are going through a probability calculation. And actually, it's been shown that it is possible to become more accurate at estimating the probabilities of future outcomes. This was shown through the work of Philip Tetlock with Super Forecasters, and this is the same process we use with our members, and almost every single one that's gone through this has found over time that they could be more accurate, on average, with the probabilities they assign to different outcomes and what ends up happening. Now, of course, no one's ever going to have 100% accuracy with their estimates. You're not going to become Mystic Meg and be able to see into the future. 
But what you can do is measure your level of accuracy and however inaccurate you are, that's now your margin of error that you apply when you're analyzing any opportunities. And this is a much more effective way of trading. So hopefully you can now see that if trading is a game of probabilities, then probabilities need to play a part in your analysis and decision making. Risk reward on its own is not enough. So there are two things you need to do next. The first thing is that estimating probabilities is a skill and it's going to take time to develop. But the only way you're going to develop it is by actually going ahead and doing it. So you can start off already estimating the probabilities of different outcomes when you're analyzing the markets. Of course, you're gonna be crap at first, like any skill, you're going to be very inaccurate. And maybe that will open your eyes to what's been going wrong with your trading so far. But over time, you'll start to improve. And there are different things you can do to actually improve your estimates of probability, which we could discuss in another video. Then the second thing you need to do is start collecting a huge amount of data. You know, I made the joke earlier that people usually rely on dozens of trades as their data, and that is often the case. They use very small sample sizes. You need a much bigger sample size, not just of the outcomes after setups that you're looking for, but also of specific characteristics, different aspects of the context. How does that change the probability of a situation? And when it comes to collecting data, my best advice is to use a trading simulator. That's gonna speed up time. You'll be able to collect a lot more data in a much shorter amount of time. And my preferred simulator is Forex Tester. If you use the link in the description box, you can get an extra 10% off. And you know, a lot of traders criticize the use of trading simulators because they say, oh, it doesn't reflect the psychology you have in the live markets and blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, when it comes to estimating probabilities, your psychology shouldn't play a part in it. You're looking at the facts of the market. Your psychology might affect how you trade the opportunity once you enter the trade, and that might change the probabilities of things happening. But the actual markets are the markets. It doesn't matter if it's a simulator or the live markets. The psychology doesn't play a part in this. And in fact, the better you get at estimating the probabilities in the markets and the more accurate you get, the more it solves most trading psychology issues anyway, because you turn something from an uncertainty into a risk, which if you saw one of our last videos, Videos, you'll know that clears out a lot of the hesitation that people have. You'll see that video linked up here. So here's what I want you to do now, and this is really important. So our channel, since we weren't posting many videos for a long time, we're not really getting many views per video, but I like to use the engagement on our videos as a guide for what sort of information you guys want. And if we're not getting many views, I can't really tell. So what I need you to do is to hit the like button, leave a comment and if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel so I know you're interested in information about probabilities. Then in the next few videos, I can cover how to estimate probabilities, what you need to keep in mind and what sort of formula you go through, and then also how to improve it, that whole process that I talked about that our members have gone through. And if you want to know more about my trading and the things that I think are important in the markets, click the link in the description to our free training and I'll talk you through all of it there. Thanks a lot for watching, I'll see you soon, take care.